Will you please stand with me for the reading of his word? I'll be reading from Psalm 107, beginning at verse 1. I'll be reading from the King James Version. My Bible reads as such. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gather them out of the, out of the lands, from the east, and from the west, from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary, solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. That's Psalm 107, verses 1 through 8, made out of blessing. Will you please by your hand and prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this minute. We thank you for the ability and the privilege to praise your name. We thank you for your love and arms and protection as we made our way to your house of worship. We thank you for your words of wisdom. We thank you for your, for your teachings. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your love, your unconditional love. Father, as we go forth through this day, let us remember whose we are, not who we are. Let us continue to be the light that you'd have us to be. Watch over us and guide us like only you can. Please forgive us of our sins, those that we've forgotten, those that we've not even taken responsibility for. Just, Father, just continue to forgive us because we know not what we do. Bless those that are in leadership, Father, and continue to bless our community. In Jesus' precious and holy name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Good morning, St. John's. Good morning. I hope everybody's week was going great. I know it is because we're all waking up this morning able to praise God together. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to shout for the praises and the blessings that God has done for us all week? Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. As we're shouting the voice of victory and shout with the voice of praise. Yes. That means we ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. All ye lands, yes. serve the Lord with gladness. Yes. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I was glad I rejoice. I was overwhelmed with enthusiasm. Joy bells rang from the depths of my soul when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us prepare now for our responsive reading. Our responsive reading for today comes from Psalms 19, verses 1 through verse 14. This is the King James Version. Let us read responsively. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. They then have to set the tabernacle for the sun. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his error? Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins, and let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Altogether, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Our congregational hymn for the morning, I have decided to follow Jesus. Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. He's Amen. kept us and brought us through another week. Yes. Amen. And we are truly grateful for all of his many blessings. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank the men who came out on yesterday for the men's ministry meeting. Amen. 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 Thank you for your presence and your participation. Also, like to thank the young family and brother Randy Thomas for cleaning and disinfecting the church on yesterday. Amen. Amen. 
keeping on top of COVID-19 and keeping that rascal out of here. Amen. 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 Uh, certainly uh, on next Sunday, uh, excuse me, next Saturday, 10 o'clock, it is the women's ministry meeting. Amen. 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 And certainly we are back on our regular schedule, so we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock for a prayer meeting and at 7 o'clock for Bible study. Amen. 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 This week we are to begin our study in Revelations this week. Amen. 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 There's some who have been anxiously uh, waiting and awaiting us to start in the book of Revelations. And certainly now that we have uh, concluded the uh, new members training and uh, new members orientation and discipleship training and the bylaws, we will now get back into our book studies and we will study the book of Revelation. Amen. 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 And certainly, uh, like to announce to the men, uh, we need you here next Saturday uh, at 8 a.m. so we can do some much needed cleanup outside. Amen. 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 It's, uh, it's been a couple of years since we've had our cleanup where we clean around the fence line and some other areas out there, and it shows. Amen. And, and we need to get uh, the outside area cleaned up and uh, presentable because we want the outside to look nice when we get the parking lot uh, taken fixed and we get the new extension to the parking lot and when we get the new gates up so that we can open the gates easy and, and, and close them easy. We want, uh, when we drive in, uh, we want it to look like a place that is presentable, that is decent and in order, as the scripture says that we are to uh, have things for God, that God likes things decent and in order. Amen. Amen. And we certainly want it to be decent and in order as we drive up the new driveway into the new parking lot. Amen. 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 So that, uh, and especially uh, that this winter, uh, we can be off the street. There should be room enough for all of St. John to park in the parking lot so no one would have to uh, park out on the street. And we know when they plow the snow, that means you have to park that much further out in the street. And the way, uh, some folks drive up and down 16th Street, uh, you know, like it's a speedway or a racetrack. Uh, we want to be off the street. Amen. 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 And, and certainly uh, we're getting closer to getting there. Amen. 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 By, by God's grace, his blessings, and by your help, your financial support, we're, we're getting closer to getting there. Amen. Amen. Uh, certainly, uh, we want to uh, remind you that when you go out in public, public gatherings, please wear your mask, maintain your personal space distancing, and uh, please uh, stay away from those folks that may have COVID-19 and uh, may be trying to give it to you unknowingly. Amen. So please... Wear your mask, keep your distance, frequent hand washing. If you can't wash them, use some hand sanitizer. Amen. 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 And uh, if you haven't already done so, please take the COVID-19 test. Uh, that can be done. Please register at Test Nebraska, Charles Drew, or the Red, and the Red Cross. Amen. Amen. If you haven't already done so, you have... Ten days left to fill out the 2020 census. Amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, if you haven't done so, please get that filled out so we can get the funding back in our area that is ours. Amen. 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 
If you haven't already done so, please register to vote and vote. Amen. Uh, please request your mail-in ballots. And certainly uh, we have uh, uh, applications where you can uh, register to vote. And also we have a uh, request form for mail-in ballots. Also, there is an election commission drop box located at the southwest corner of the Charles B. Washington Branch Public Library located at 2668 Ames Avenue. Amen. Amen. So it's right in the neighborhood so that uh, you know you can take your uh, you can take your registration if you need to register to vote you can uh, take that and drop it off there. If you want need to request a mail-in ballot you can drop it off there. You don't have to worry about uh, it getting slowed down or lost in the mail. Amen. Amen. Because the election commission drop box is one located right there in the area where they can certainly take care of that for you. Amen. Amen. How many unsaved, unchurched, unbelievers did you invite to attend uh, to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior this week? As we know, that is... Uh, one of the reasons why we've been saved in order to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that lost men and women, boys and girls, might be called out of darkness into the marvelous light. That is our responsibility, our obligation, and certainly when we have to stand before the righteous judge, he will ask us that question, and we will have to give an account of the times that we've either shared the gospel or we rejected sharing the gospel and chose not to share the gospel with those who don't know Jesus. Then, how many unsaved, unchurched, unbelievers did you invite to attend St. John this week? Certainly, uh, we want St. John to grow, so in order for St. John to grow, we must be about our Father's business by telling others about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, and then that they can come together that we might worship and fellowship with one another. Amen. 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 This time we'll be blessed by a uh, musical selection from the most magnificent music ministry, uh, This Side of Heaven. Amen. Amen. Let us be prepared to be blessed. Amen.
Justice that has taken place, the mistreatment of uh, humanity, uh, and we certainly need to call on our God yes. in times like these. Yes. As we go to God in prayer this morning, certainly when we look at our prayer list, we'd like to add to our prayer list uh, this morning uh, Mother Hayes, uh, Mother Aline Hayes, who not feeling well on today. So we certainly want to be in prayer for her. Amen. Also want to be in prayer for Sister Emma McCruel who's not feeling well today also. So they are absent from among us on today uh, due to illness. Then we want to be in prayer for you know, Brother Long who is recovering from back surgery. So as we look at our prayer list today, as always, our prayer list is long because each of us are on the prayer list even though our names are not listed there. So as we prepare to go to God in prayer, certainly uh, we invite you to stand in the pews or remain seated in the pews for your, we know our Physical posture does not determine our spiritual posture before the Lord. That the Lord looks on the heart of the individual. And that if we are humble and submissive unto the Lord, that he will hear our prayer. He will hear our cry. He will answer our call. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God and Father, we Humbly bow before your presence with thanksgiving. We come thanking you for the honor and the privilege of being made in your image after your likeness. We thank you that you're our God and our Father, that you love us in spite of our unworthiness. Thank you for Jesus the Christ, your only begotten Son, who humbled himself even unto the death of Calvary's rugged cross, was buried in a borrowed tomb, and early on the third day morning, you raised him from the grave with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit who keeps us sealed until the day of redemption, who leads us, guides us, and directs us in the way that you would have us to go. We thank you, O oh God, for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and our failures blessing us according to our needs as we come together on today oh god we just want to say thank you thank you because you've been mighty good to us you've been far better to us than uh, we deserve or far better to us than we could ever be to ourselves we're grateful that you're god and that you're god all by yourself and that no one has any influence over your being god as we come today, we come mindful of those who are on the prayer list today. Certainly, there are those who are bereaved, there are those who are sick, and there are those who are shut in. We ask a special blessing today upon uh, Mother Hayes, uh, Sister Emma McCruel, Brother Kenneth Long, and all of those who are sick and shut in. We pray and ask that you would touch and heal according to your will and your purpose. Then, Father, we ask a blessing upon Deacon Trosper, who is away from us on this morning. We pray and ask that you would bless and keep him, that you would return him back safely unto us. Then, Father, there are those who are bereaved on the prayer list. We pray and ask that you would touch, comfort, and console those who are bereaved, turn their tears of sorrow into tears of joy, let them know that they who die in the Lord shall live again. Then for those who are locked behind prison walls and jailhouse doors, touch and let them know that you see and that you care. 
and that they just turn it over to you, that you're able to turn it around and cause all things to work together for good for those who love you and who are the call according to your will and your purpose. Now, Father, we ask your blessings upon the President of these United States. We ask that you please touch his heart, touch his mind and his spirit. Help him to understand and to know, God, that one day he too must stand before the righteous judge, give an account of the deeds that he does in his body. Help him to understand and know that the decisions that he make affect your people and that he must give account unto you for how he has made decisions that were either good or bad for your people. Then, Father, we ask your bless upon all those who are in leadership position, those who are in uh, the House of Representatives, the, the Senate, the Supreme Court, the uh, governor's mansion, the mayor's office. Uh, we pray and ask that you would touch each leader's heart, mind, and spirit. Let them know, O oh God, that they too are accountable unto you. We need to seek your guidance and directions and the decisions that they make. Now, Father, we ask your blessings upon the St. John Missionary Baptist Church family. We pray and ask, O oh God, that you would bless us each of us, as you see, we stand in need of. Uh, we don't want to try to tell you how to bless us because we know you know better how to bless us than we know how to ask. So we pray and ask, oh God, that you would bless us as you see we stand in need. Then, Father, bless us as one body of baptized believers in Christ, that we might be the brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, that you call out of a world of darkness into your marvelous light to be. Help us, oh God, to extend loving arms to one another and helping hands to one another so that when lost men and women, boys and girls, look at us, they will see Jesus Christ in the way we live, move, and have our being. Now, Father, we ask your continued blessing upon the worship experience this day. Continue to bless the music ministry that the songs of Zion would go forth and that they would be a sweet smelling savor unto you and that some heart soul would be touched through the singing of the songs of Zion. Then, Father, we ask uh, that your preached word would go forth, that hearts, lives, and minds would be changed and transformed by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that your word would accomplish that which you sent it forth to do. Then, Father, one of these days, life as we know it down here will come to an end. Preaching days will be over and praying days will come to an end when we won't have to study war down here anymore. We pray and ask that you would meet us in that day and in that hour. We'll be able to hear your welcoming voice say, Servant of God, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on home now and make your rule over many. These and all of our blessings we ask. In the name of our living, the name of our loving, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, let the saints of God say together, Amen, 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 amen. and Amen. It's ministry giving now. Amen. Amen. We are up to the ministry of giving. Amen. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare to read the ministry of giving together in unison. And it reads, even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Like said, wherein, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings, ye are cursed with the curse, and ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, 
that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed. Ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. 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 So if any of you did not have opportunity to put your tithes and offerings in the time and box on the way in, we ask that you would please take advantage of the opportunity to do so as you exit the sanctuary. Amen. Uh, Mother Hayes sent in her building fund offering for today. Amen. Amen. And uh, Sister McCruel sent in her offering and building fund offering for today. Amen. They are sick and they can't be here, but they wanted to make sure that their offering uh, was here Amen. for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Certainly we thank all of those who are unable to physically be with us who uh, support the ministry through uh, your prayers and through Giveify and through sending tithes and offering to financially support the church. Amen. Also, we thank those who give over and above the tithes and offerings to the building fund for the support of the ministry. Amen. This time we'll be blessed by another musical selection from the most magnificent and melodious music ministry this side of heaven. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. I just bow in a word of prayer. Gracious God and loving Father, as we approach thou with a proclamation of the gospel of Jesus the Christ, we acknowledge, O oh Lord, our unworthiness to handle your word. We pray and ask that you please empty me yourself and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, think with my mind. Please love with my heart. And please speak with my tongue. That your word will go forth and accomplish that which you sent it forth to do. Please, Lord, hide me now behind the shadow of the cross of Calvary. That your people might see none of me, but all of thee. That the name of Jesus Christ may be glorified. That the body of Christ may be edified. Be glad to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. I'd like to prayerfully call your attention to the first epistle of John, the first chapter, verses 1 through verse 4. That's the book of First John. First chapter, verses 1 through verse 4. And I will be reading from the New King James Version. That's the epistle or the book, the letter. First letter by John, the first chapter, verses 1 through verse 4. And it reads, That which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. I'd like to use for thought for your prayer for consideration. Let your joy be full. Amen. Let your joy be full. The writer here is the Apostle John. And John writes this letter uh, in A.D. 80. When John writes this letter, uh, we discover now Peter is dead, Paul is dead, and John is the uh, remaining apostles, the remaining eyewitness of Jesus Christ. And as John writes this letter, he writes this letter to deal with some problems that have crept into the church. John writes this letter to reaffirm and to confirm uh, who Jesus Christ is. 
So as he writes this letter, this is what is known as a circular letter because of the fact that this letter was one that circulated and moved from church to church, from audience to audience, in order to affirm who Jesus Christ is. So as John writes this letter, he, he writes this letter to combat what is known as Gnosticism. Because there was this philosophy uh, of Gnosticism, and, and, and Gnosticism comes from the word Gnostic, which means knowledge or know. And this Gnosticism was putting forth the idea of dualism. Now, in dualism, what you have is you have body and you have spirit. Well, what Gnosticism was putting forth was that uh, the body is evil or flesh is evil and spirit is good. So as a result, they were saying that uh, uh, Jesus Christ uh, couldn't have been uh, who he says that he was because of the fact that if he came in the flesh, that flesh is evil, so he could not have been the son of God in an evil body. Also, they, they, they put forth this idea that since spirit is good, that the spirit could not have dwelled in an evil body. So they put forth this idea, they say, well, Jesus came, but Jesus really was just a phantom. That he was not a real person. And that because he was not a real person, that he could not have died and been resurrected again. So this is the kind of backdrop that we find John writing against in order to reaffirm the believers as to who Jesus Christ is. He needed to refer, reaffirm for them because of the fact uh, all of this now is creeping into the church and now it is causing the believers to have some doubt uh, in whom they have believed. And you know, you have to be careful about who you listen to and what you listen to. Uh, everybody don't have your best interest at heart. Amen. And everything they say is not good for you. Amen. So John writes this letter to remind them and to set the record straight as to who Jesus Christ is. Now, as you know, uh, you Bible scholars will remember what John writes in his gospel account. And if you'll remember what he writes in this gospel account, you'll discover that this letter here lines directly up with what he writes in his gospel account. For in his gospel account, he writes, in the beginning was the word. He says the word was God, the word was with God in the beginning, and the word was God. Say, and, and he says that the same was in the beginning. So what John does is he refers back to his gospel account, and those who had believed the gospel account, now he finds himself referring back to his gospel account, but he refers to it in a different light. For he tells them here in verse 1, notice that he says, that which was from the beginning. Talking about the word. Talking about Jesus Christ, which was from the beginning. In other words, he's reminding that, that, that when the beginning began, Jesus already was. So he says, that which was from from the beginning, he says, which we have heard. He reminds them that he was a hearer of Jesus Christ. 
He heard Jesus speak. And, 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 and we know that the Bible says that never a man spoke like him. You see, uh, Jesus, when Jesus spoke, it was different from when the Pharisees spoke. Uh, when, when Jesus spoke, it was different from when the Sadducees spoke. When Jesus spoke, it was different from when all of the other religious leaders spoke because when Jesus spoke, his words went directly to the heart of the individual. And, and, and John said, we heard him. We heard him speak. So, so, so I'm giving testimony. John writes this letter reaffirming and giving testimony, firsthand testimony, firsthand eyewitness as to who Jesus Christ is. He, he said, uh, notice uh, I, I, that we have heard him. He said, not only did we hear him, but he says, which we have seen with our eyes. So John said, not only did they hear him, but he said they heard him. And when they heard him, uh, his words uh, made change in their life. And then he says, which we have looked upon. And you see, what, what John is doing here, he, he's presenting a case of the human senses. You see, he's presenting a case using three of the human senses. We'll discover John deals with the hearing, he deals with the seeing, and then he will deal with the touching or the feeling. And what John does is he presents this from a point of view that uh, these human senses causes one to have reason and judgment. And that one's reason and judgment will dictate to them who Jesus is. He says that uh, not only did we look upon him and our hands have handled uh, uh, concerning the word of life. Notice here, uh, John now refers to Jesus as the word of life. In other words, he's the living word. He is the word who gives life. And in giving life, he gives eternal life. He wants his audience to remember in whom they have believed, but he also wants them to remember what they received when they believed. Yeah, yeah, see, they receive eternal life. Yeah. And John is reminding them because, as I said earlier, he is combating this Gnosticism, uh, this philosophy that Jesus could not have been who he says that he was. He says the, the word that the life was manifested. In other words, life itself, life himself was manifested before them. Jesus Christ, the life, the one who gives life to everything, here he is, life himself was manifested before John. Yeah, yeah, life. Uh, when, when, when we look at life, we're looking at eternal life through Jesus Christ because man was spiritually dead. Because of the fall of Adam in the garden and because Adam was disobedient through Adam's sin, uh, the Bible says we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Then, then Paul took it a step further to tell us that uh, by one Adam, that death entered into the world. But then he says, by the second Adam, life through Jesus Christ comes into the world. In other words, uh, Jesus Christ is that life-giving fountain that gives eternal life where eternal life springs from. And one who has this life 
will never die again. So, so John says that the life was manifested. He, he goes on to say, and again, to reaffirm what he's seen, he says, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Jesus Christ is that eternal life. Uh, that was with the Father in the beginning, who has always been with the Father. And John says that he was made manifest to us. John keeps, notice he keeps reciting the same things over, and he repeats them again, uh, because he is putting emphasis on the fact that I want you to make sure that if you don't get it the first time around, I want to make sure that you get it the second time around because this is crucial to your eternal life. You see, you can't let anyone come steal from you what the Lord has given you. And, and, and the only way they can steal it is by you letting them have it. You see, nobody else can change your belief. You have to change your own belief. You can listen to what other people say, but other people can't make the choice for you. You make the choice yourself. Uh, so, 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 so John is reiterating here to these believers now, once you have made the choice to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, don't let anyone come along with any kind of philosophy and thought that will cause you to turn your back on whom you have believed. So you see, John is getting the point across. You, you have to make sure that you know 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 Jesus Christ for yourself. And when you know him for yourself, I don't care what come, come hell or high water, it makes no difference what anybody else says. I know who I have believed. I know who I have entrusted my life to. I know who my hope is built in because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I'm going to wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ the solid rock. I stand on other ground, is sinking sand, and because I'm standing on Jesus Christ, I know he is the solid rock. You see, that's who I'm standing on, because I know who he is in my life. I know what he has done for me. Yeah. See, I know where he found me. Yeah. You see, I, I didn't find Jesus uh -huh. because he wasn't the one lost. Right. You see, I was the one lost and Jesus found me. All right. All right. And I'm glad that he, when he found me, uh, he, he didn't criticize me. Yeah. You know, some folks like to look down on you and talk about you yeah. instead of trying to help you up. They try to push you down a little bit further. I'm glad that when Jesus found me in the depths and in the pit and in the muck and mar of my sins, that he reached down and picked me up. And when he picked me up, he cleaned me up. And after cleaning me up, he gave me a new attitude, gave me a new look on life. And after he picked me up and cleaned me up and gave me a new attitude, he lifted me to a higher altitude. Yeah. You see, now I'm flying high in Jesus Christ. Right. That's the reason why no matter what comes my way, it doesn't get me down because I'm flying too high to come down because I didn't lift myself up. Jesus lift me up. I'm flying high in the spirit. Not flying high on nothing else but the spirit of God. And because he has me up, I'm leaning and depending on him. 
John says that, and we declare to you that eternal life, that which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. You know, that's a pretty good fellowship. Yeah, yeah. He said, have fellowship with us. Us apostles. Us disciples. Us believers. Us followers of Christ. Us Christ followers. Those of us who have denied ourselves, taken up our cross and following Jesus, that you might have fellowship with us. And notice who us have fellowship with. Us have fellowship with the Father. Us have fellowship with the Son. His Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, what a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Yeah, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arm. I'm going to enjoy my fellowship. You see, Christ went to a hill called Calvary. He died on an old rugged cross. He hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. See, he died on the cross. And I'm glad he died on the cross. Because had he not died on the cross, my sins and your sins would have not been forgiven. But because he died on the cross, we've been forgiven of our sins. I'm glad they buried him in a borrowed tomb. I'm glad that Jesus stayed there all night Friday. I'm glad that he stayed there all day Saturday. I'm glad he stayed there all Saturday night. But I'm even more glad that early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, that shouting time on Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, when Jesus got up from the grave, he got up with the keys to the kingdom in his hand. He got up with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. When he got up, you and I got up. And I'm glad he got up. I'm glad that I'm up. And because he got up, we'll never be down again. Because Jesus will never be down again. Because he said, I am he that once was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And because Jesus lived, we can face tomorrow. Because Jesus lived, all fear is gone. John goes on to say, he said, in these things we have written to you so that your joy might be full. See, now that you know Jesus Christ, now that you know that you know Jesus Christ, now your joy can be full. No matter what comes your way, your joy can be full. You know, I can tell you, my joy is full. The reason why I know my joy is full, because I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. i felt sin's breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus say, bidding me still to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. You see, John said, you have to hear something. He said you have to see something. But then you have to feel something. If you've seen Jesus for yourself, if you heard his voice, if you felt his Holy Spirit, then you know him for yourself. Then your joy can be full. The only thing that keeps your joy from being full is you. You're the only one who can keep your joy from being full. If you submit and surrender to the Holy Spirit, if you allow him to lead you, guide you, and direct you, 
And if you accept the fact that God is still on the throne yes. and that he's still in charge, yes. that your joy can be full. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry what comes your way. Mm -hmm. Be not dismayed, yes. whatever be tied. Yes. God will take care of you. Yes. Beneath his wing of love abide. God will take care of you. Yes. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will, God will, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. So since God is taking care of you, why don't you let your joy be full? Uh, why don't you? Just let your joy be full. God has all power. He's able to do all things. Do all things exceedingly well. Why would you have less than full joy? You ought to have complete joy. You ought to be all joy. When things don't go the way you want them to go, still praise the Lord. Still have joy, knowing that God still sees, He still cares, and He's still a great provider. He will provide all your needs. Just rejoice in the Lord. As Paul says, and again, I say rejoice. Let your supplications or your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God will guard your heart. Uh, he will surround your heart with his peace, love, and joy when you turn it over to the Lord. Let your joy be full. Let your joy be full. Celebrate and rejoice because your joy can be full in Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Joy, 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 down in my soul. Joy, joy, joy. Oh, what a joy it is. That's why the songwriter says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Yes. And the songwriter says, this joy I have, yes. the world didn't give it, and the world sure can't take it away. Amen. See, when your joy is Jesus' joy, yes. you don't have to worry about situations. When you have Jesus' joy, you don't have to worry about circumstance. Right. When you have Jesus' joy, you don't have to worry about what you don't have because who you do have is greater than what you don't have. You have Jesus' joy. You can rejoice. You can celebrate because you have Jesus' joy down in your heart. Amen. Like the standing invitation to discipleship. There may be one here today that knows not Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. And so we like to extend to you the invitation that you might come Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. If there's one here, we invite you to come as a candidate for baptism. Secondly, you might be here. You know Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior, but you don't have a church home. If so, we invite you to come and accept St. John as your church home. And if you choose not to accept St. John as your church home, we will send you to any other Baptist church in the city. Thirdly, you might be here. You've been a member of St. John. You've been gone for a period of time without a just cause. And so we invite you to come and renew your relationship, renew your fellowship, renew your discipleship, and restore your membership in the St. John Missionary Baptist Church. If you fall into any one of those categories, we invite you to come. We invite you to come. Is there one today? Is there one? Is there another? He will save you. Only trust him. Is there another? Only trust him. Is there another? Only trust him. Just now. Just now. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him. Just now. 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 Just
trust now. God bless you. You may be seated. situations and circumstances come into our lives and as we are in these frail bodies we discover that things occur in our bodies that calls for us to have injury and surgery done to our body and we know that anytime we go into the operating room we are placed, our lives are placed in the hands of somebody else. And we know that persons can, being human, sometimes make mistakes. And so, God, we come asking that as Sister Connor prepares to go into surgery, certainly that you would, we know that you would be in the operating room with her. We pray and ask that you would guide the hands of the anesthesiologist. She would not only guide the hands, but guide the mind and the thinking of the anesthesiologist. Then for the surgical team that will be working upon her and performing surgery, the surgeon, the uh, surgery nurses, and all of the team and staff that will be working with her, we pray and ask your wisdom, your guidance and direction that you would guide the hands of the instruments and God those, oh God, that will be caring for us, Sister Connor. For we know that doctors are practicing medicine. But we know, oh God, that you don't have to practice. You did it right the first time. So we pray and ask, oh God, that you'll that certainly be with Sister Connor, that you will calm her nerves, calm her spirit, give her the peace, the comfort, and assurance of knowing that you will never leave from her side, that you are always with her, and that you will hold her in the hollow of your hands. We pray and ask, oh God, that you will take her into the emergency room, be with her while she's in the emergency room, and then, Father, bring her out of the emergency room. And then when you bring her out, we pray and ask that you would be with her in recovery, that she would be able to recover from the anesthesiology, and then as she goes through the healing process that will take place afterward. We pray and ask that you would ease the pain, ease the uh, experience, oh God, of recovery, that you would restore her back to perfect health, mm -hmm. as only you can do. And that she might, oh God, give your name the glory, honor, and the praise your testimony of how good you are mm -hmm. and how you are able to do all things and do all things exceedingly well. Not only do we pray for Sister Connor, we pray for Brother Connor, Brother Rodney, and the Connors family, mm -hmm. uh, that they, oh God, would be at ease and that they would be a source of uh, encouragement and that they would be a source of ministry and help to Sister Connors as she goes through this period. 
We thank you, O God, for what you have done in the coroner's life. Thank you for what you are doing, and we thank you in advance for what you will do. We claim the victory in no other name than in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. And in his name we pray and give thanks. Let the church say together, Amen. 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 the announcements that have been made and I certainly want to remind the men about next Saturday. Um, please men wear, uh, please wear long pants and long sleeve shirt. Amen. 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 For, for, your, for your protection, please wear long sleeves and long pants. I know you might want to be cool, but it's better to be warm and be protected than to be cool and be unprotected and end up with injury uh, because you are un uncovered and unprotected. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you what I've experienced, so I don't want you to experience what I've experienced. Amen. 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 Don't, don't say, well, that, that, that happened to you. It won't happen to me. <laughs> I know sometimes we uh, like to think we're special. Um, and just because something happened to one person the same way we think that, you know, God's going to change everything just for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and God doesn't change uh, things, uh, laws that have been put in place uh, ever since the beginning. He doesn't change those for us just because we don't want to uh, obey the laws and be submitted unto the laws. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, and certainly those women will be here next Saturday at 10 o'clock. Amen. Amen. Having the uh, women's ministry meeting, and certainly uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you on Wednesday at uh, 6 o'clock at prayer meeting, 7 o'clock at Bible study for the book of Revelation. Amen. Amen. And uh, do we know what time choir rehearsal is this week? Choir rehearsal at 11.15 this week. Amen. Amen. That's, a, that's an interesting time, but 11. Oh, oh okay. okay. 11.15, wow. We, we're going to let y'all work it out about the cleaning and disinfecting the church. So, uh, so. Amen. Amen. If there's nothing else to claim my attention, let's remember those on the prayer list, please. Uh, uh, pray for those who are on the prayer list and uh, those who have asked for prayer. Remember, Sister Connors, Amen. in your prayer. Amen. Amen. And, and certainly uh, Mother Hayes, Sister McCool, Brother Long, and uh, Mother Hayes Young, and all of those that are on the prayer list, please uh, remember them in, in your prayers. There's nothing else to claim our attention. Let the church say amen. Let the church Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. So let the church. So let the church say amen. Say amen. And let the church say amen. 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 God has spoken. God has spoken. So let the church. So let the church say amen. Say amen. Gracious God and loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for the honor and the privilege of coming to your house together in your name to worship you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and his presence and his power and how he has manifested himself in this place this day. Father, we came to worship. Now we leave to serve. Help us to be better servants for you going out than we were when we came in. Then, Father, to be your holy and divine will. Give us a good night's rest on tonight. 
and waken us on tomorrow where we might be better servants for you on tomorrow than we have been on today. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide you now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let the church say together, Amen. 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 Amen.